let's quickly run through some of the most basic CSS snippets and ideas that will help you work on your WordPress website. Number one, selectors, classes, and IDs. In CSS, the basis of everything is a selector. Simply put, it's an abbreviation that tells the code what to target. You can target all the individual paragraphs on the site with a P. After that, you have classes. These are specific types of selectors that you define. If you want to target only the H1 headings for posts, you may have post title. A CSS class selector is noted by the period in front of the selector itself. IDs in CSS work exactly the same as a class, except for two minor differences. They are indicated by an octothorpe in front of the selector, and they are named for a single specific instance, such as email subscribe about page. There are more complex selectors, but since we're discussing the CSS basics, we'll keep it light. Number two, colons and semicolons. All CSS code is between curly braces. Within those braces, however, each line of customization must end with a semicolon. That indicates to the browser that particular style is complete. Also, between the actual CSS style and the value, you place a regular colon. Note that while you can leave spaces, it's generally accepted that you shouldn't. With most websites and themes offering CSS minification, all spaces are removed regardless. Number three, CSS comments. These are opened with forward slash asterisk and closed with asterisk forward slash. Commenting your code is important, not only for you to return to the CSS later, but also for later developers. In general, CSS comments are used to indicate what a particular snippet does. Number four, Important, this is one of the most often used elements, but also one of the most misused and overused elements too. Important declares that whatever line it's in is to override any other styling for that selector. So if you wanted to make sure that a particular element always has a specific color, you would use important to do so. Number five, display none. This particular CSS snippet is great to know. All it does is make whatever element you target simply disappear. For example, if you need a page to not have a header menu, you would simply put in display none. Doing this with a class that appears on nearly every page can completely remove it from the site, so you need to be careful about what you apply this to. Number six, visibility hidden. Very briefly, you may also use the visibility hidden CSS to remove an element from the screen. The display none code will completely remove the element from the page. The browser will not render the element at all. With visibility hidden, the element still renders and loads into the page, but it's invisible. So you would generally only use this for something like a tracking pixel. Number seven, margin and padding. Margins and padding are misunderstood by newcomers to CSS. They appear the same at first, but once you dig in, you will see they're entirely different. Margin is the space around an element. It is invisible and transparent and can even be negative. Having a larger left margin will push the element to the right. A larger top margin then pushes the element toward the bottom. Padding buffers the size of the element. Padding on the left will extend the element's background to the left. It is essentially increasing its physical mass, like adding a second sweater on a cold day. You get more padding on your body, and because of that, you cannot have negative padding. When using it as code, you can use either margin 15 pixels or padding 15 pixels for uniform spacing, and you can specify margin top padding left, and so on. And finally, number eight, coloring elements. In CSS, you could define a color in two ways. The main way is using its six digit hex code. The second way is using a predefined color word. Basic colors such as blue and black and red are predefined and you could use them without having to remember any hex codes. But if primary tones aren't what you needed, hex codes are the best bet. You can find out hex values using Photoshop or GIMP or even one of the many available sites. And there you go. That was some basic CSS that every WordPress user should know. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more content. With that said, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.